People of Planet Poke, it has been too long. Hey everybody, it's me, Diogen Z. And sorry for the little bit of hiatus there in Conquest episodes. Should be getting right back up to the regular tempo of daily uploads for these. But I had some things to do. Some rearranging of college schedules to do. Some classes I thought that were going to be online that are not online anymore. Anyway, I'm back. And I'm ready to train. That is right, this episode all about training. And it's an important thing to do. I think at this point, at this juncture, you understand the vitality. Not the vitality, but the importance. Probably the best word would be to put it. The importance of doing these training montages is so that the rest of your team doesn't get their rear ends kicked when the time comes to a kingdom invasion. And it's very nice to have a mixed batch of warriors throughout many lands that you've already conquered to take out of your roster whenever you need for important battles. There are some battles coming up in the northern kingdoms that we have not unlocked just yet. Actually, have we unlocked them? Yes, yes we have, because we have uh, taken the last kingdom last episode, which was a while ago, I forgot, with Masamune. And now that that's fallen, the last three remaining most loyal servants of Nobunaga is all that remains in our path. And you're going to see very soon that all this training that we did does amount to something there. And if only to see the awesome evolutions, I would encourage that too, because the artwork in Conquest is astounding. I really love that they went ahead for every single Pokemon and made it their own unique artistic expression so that you could see what that Pokemon would be like in battle just by looking at its face and ex its expression in life. Basically, is it ready to do battle or is it cowering behind its warrior? And most of them, I'm happy to report, look like they're ready to go right up head-to-head -head on the battlefield. Which is what we need. So, in the time off that I had, it's really been business, business, business. It's been actually doing a lot of other stuff for future projects on my channel. A couple of big, long videos that are going to be an hour long or more are in the works. There's a friend of mine who is also on my channel of Spong Mario called Vladimir Z. And we're working on a movie together to talk about his origins, so that should be pretty interessante, but I've been playing a lot of Fallout 3, doing a lot, a lot of Fallout 3 because over the super summer sales on Steam, I managed to get it for $5 with all the DLC included. I love that. I had to pay $10 for the disc on 360, and then another $10 to pay for the brother, no, it couldn't have been $10 for just the disc. Could it have been? I don't know, maybe I lucked out on a deal and then got shortchanged on another because I paid $10 for just Brotherhood of Steel and the Riverboat DLC, which I forget which that one was, maybe Point Lookout? No, that wasn't Point Lookout, that was another one. But that was $10 and that was only two of the DLC, so Steam, superior deals out of any other retailer out there. Purely out of the fact because there's no disc, there's no plastic to be shipped. So that alone takes a huge cost out of what you would be charged for paying for all that. And it's a blast. Haven't paid, or haven't played, haven't paid for. Haven't played Fallout 3 actually since March of 2010, around the time when the Fukushima incident happened. Was it 2010? It couldn't have been 2010. It's probably 2011 that I'm thinking. I get my dates all mixed up, but hey, I know what I'm, I'm thinking of playing at that point. It definitely was Fallout. But it, it was a very weird time because I had just recently discovered that game. Because prior to that, I didn't have a 360. My friend, he repaired a red-ringed one, and I was actually there to watch the repair go on. And it's still running today, and it actually did a marathon recently. A 20-hour marathon held up just fine with the two pennies trick. Swapping out the gooey, sticky, heat-collecting heat pad conductors so with those swapped out the red ring was solved and after that I was able to experience 360 for the first time and Fallout 3. Very strange game to have happen 
to you right at the point of a nuclear disaster because people, although are not talking about it on the news, it's something that really needs to be thought about a lot more serious than it is. It's not like that radiation has gone anywhere. If anything, it's gone into the ocean when they threw gallons and gallons of ocean water on the rods of graphite blasted with uranium. Gallons of that water had to go somewhere, and uh, it's either back in the weather system, so radioactive rain, not sure if that's possible, but I'm most certain that it got back into the ocean. So if you are a seafood lover, you might want to stay away from that, perhaps. Just a thought. Just a recommendation. But it was strange, because here I am going through a game where... Oh goody, Piplup is evolving. Into Printlop! Had to go into a, a simulation of what it would be like to survive a nuclear holocaust. And while that was not a nuclear holocaust, you know, if more of those situations start happening where nuclear plants break down because of natural disasters, and who are we to say that there's not going to be another natural disaster? We're not Mother Nature. We're not the Earth. We don't know how the crust is moving along those lava plumes. We often forget that the Earth is not dormant. It's constantly rotating at about a thousand miles an hour in a vacuum of space filled with billions of other rocks that are also flying at frightening speeds at it, away from it, at all directions around it. And meanwhile, on the actual planet's surface, underneath the very surface, it's jostling around with this lava-type blood almost. You could kind of think of the molten core as the lava blood of the planet. Oh, double knockout. Sweet! I love that. Vine Whip is super satisfying because of that. But it's constantly shifting, and then you've got the shifting waters as well. Nothing on this Earth stands still, and people forget that fast. So to think that that wouldn't happen again, it's, it's kind of naive, in my opinion. But to play through that game and be like, wow, you know, how would you survive? What would you scavenge? How would you react in these situations when most easily solved puzzles are done with a gun? Would you have the balls to pull the trigger when necessary? And could you evade all those raiders and super mutants that were unleashed upon the radioactive wasteland? very strange game and I'd like to know in the comments have you played a game that has really kind of shaped your reality or warped what you thought because I know for a while that game actually depressed me for some time you know I was thinking about the possibilities of it happening just on the radiate radioactive pollution that we've been spouting out you know how long would it take to completely nullify the population what would that look like so let me know, have you ever had a gaming experience that has really made you step back and said, whoa, this could be a possibility, and I've got to consider that in real life? I'd love to know. Certainly, I wouldn't suspect it with Pokemon, but if there is another game, do let me know. I'm DioGenZ. Do check out my channel if you enjoy this series, and remember to subscribe to Planet Poke. More Conquest goodness coming up.